Hi everyone, today I was going to do a video about, um, well a flip through basically for this um, Stillman and Burn hardcover sketchbook but I um, haven't finished colouring in this page and so technically until I'm finished I, I, I'm not going to do the flip through obviously and the light is starting to go now, I have been had a quite busy um, morning and early afternoon so I'm sitting down a bit too late um, in the afternoon to film this video so the light might not be right. So instead I'm going to share a little um, Jackson's art haul. So these two things I have mentioned to you before when I ordered a bunch of... Um, was it the Princeton? Um, yeah, so these brushes I ordered before some of them just to extend my collection. This is the Princeton from the Heritage Collection and they are um, sable brushes and so one I ordered that is a size 12 I told you I wanted a nice fat brush the biggest one I have um, from the round brushes is the number six I believe yeah so that's this brush right here and it's um, I find that these brushes are lovely but they don't come to a very uh, fine point which some of the big brushes the advantage of them is they have teeny tiny point which you can see hopefully here if it will focus yeah so I will demonstrate or I will try this brush um, with you for the first time it has um, the gamma rabbit in it so it's quite hard so it needs to be washed out it's brand new so it just came this morning and along with it I also had ordered the um, Schmincke Horadam watercolor half pan in Quinacridone gold hue and I think let me just pull out my Schmincke palette I have also shared the new colors that I have been adding um, to my 36 plus 12 empty palette so I had 12 spaces to fill and basically this was the remaining one um, for this space so um, now that I have it I think I'm going to go um, ahead and just really um, create a color kind of flow that I like because at the moment I know where these are and I know what the new ones are but I do want them to be sort of part of the colours and then obviously I need to do a new swatch card because this is the original one and then it becomes a little bit confusing. Um, also I'm not using some of these browns so I think I might take them out and keep them um, safe just in case I need them one day but for daily usage I definitely don't use these browns at all so um, these two items that have arrived today were on a back order so I think they were out of stock when I was ordering them and then you basically pay for them and once they're in the stock they send it out to you so if you didn't know that if you see an item that you really want and it's out of stock well if you're willing to wait or if you can wait then you can still order it and then it just will come to you in, in its own time so that was good so let's go ahead and actually test this brush out I think I'm going to use a red watercolor just like I did in this oh, I don't want to show you everything I want to keep some excitement for the um, flip through but this is the video I have done um, where you, if you haven't seen it yet, you can go back and have a look. This was the rest of my Princeton watercolor brushes um, collection, the, all the sizes. And I'm going to do a similar thing with this exactly the same color. Um, maybe I just actually could use this space right here to do it on, um, if that's enough. So I'll, I'll see. And I will also um, try this watercolor out. I might actually do it on, on this page just to kind of color it in. Why not? Okay, so let's go ahead. So to get out the Gamma Rabbit of a brand new watercolor brush, you need uh, 
um, to kind of go into water. This is slightly dirty water from before, which I don't mind because I actually um, need the water just to soften the brush out. And then once I've done it, because it's a nice fat brush, it's going to have a lot of the gum arabic in here. And um, so I will need to go and change the water anyway, if that makes sense. Now, um, so why do they put gum arabic? Basically, this is a brush that has been used, so it's kind of um, soft. And the brush before it's used, it kind of is, it's um, covered in the gum arabic so that the bristles don't break um, until they reach your um, home. <laughs> so this way it stays nice and um, hard and the bristles are all kind of uniform and stuck together and that prevents it from breaking the bristles. So the way to deal with this is just um, do not try to kind of force it and push on it. Um, just basically go around in your water and with some of the brushes you have to give them some time to soak in the water so the way you do this you wet it and then you leave it outside and then you go back to it and then there you go you can see from that little bit of water it's starting to give a little so I'm going to go back in and repeat the process and be very um, patient with it because these watercolor brushes they can be quite expensive this isn't uh, um, I'd say this is a middle range it's not uh, superbly expensive but still you know um, it's not cheap so you have to be quite if you want your water brushes to last a long time you need to look after them so the brush is doing quite well it's only the tip now that I can feel that still has that so I'm going to go in and touch the bottom of the glass quite gently to get the tip moving and now it's done. So I'm going to rotate the brush and push gently on my finger to make sure the gamma rabbit has kind of moved out of the bristles completely. So it feels really soft and ready to go. So I'm going to um, leave this brush and go and change my water. Okay, so the water is nice and clean now. Um, so before I go ahead with the um, swatches, some of you have mentioned um, a quill brush to me and I have been looking um, at some quill brushes but to be honest with you I have never used one and it's a little um, kind of mysterious uh, field for me to enter because from what I understand they're very soft and I'm scared of using a very soft brush. I always have been. Once I have tried a real um, squirrel um, brush and I just was, <laughs> I felt like I had completely zero control over what I was doing and so for that reason I'm slightly apprehensive about it but I definitely do want to purchase um, a quill brush and kind of learn how to use it because I love the fact that with the quill brush you get this variation of a super fine um, line with the tip and then you you got a nice kind of fat brush to, to do the washers and things like that so I do want to try that for sure so if you do use um, quill brush do let me know which brand you recommend so yeah that'd be quite useful for me so I haven't pulled out my red color. This is the um, Nevska Palitra or otherwise known as St. Petersburg White Nights. Um, and the color is Scarlet. And I love this color for swatches just because it's so beautiful and um, quite intense really. So I'm just going to push things around here. Um, I watched back my previous video and sorry I realized after publishing it that it just <clears throat> the focus was terrible it's really blurry so I'm really sorry about that I'll try to work on it so I'm going to put the water in just above here and then on this side which you can't see I have my scarlet so I'm going to go into scarlet 
this um, like I was saying this brush does have obviously takes a lot of water in and so it is actually going to be a lot messier so essentially I'm going to see what kind of shapes I can do and what I can go to a fine line so that was nice and then maybe I'm trying to see if we can get a super fine line and at the minute I can't because it has a lot of water so let's see if I just barely touch it how fine I could get well that's not very fine a two zero when I'm pushing it's the same width and then the one round in kind of in a normal sort of state comparable to this but if you're want, wanting to um, achieve a line of this thinness this brush is not going to do that but it's great for kind of um, washes and sort of floral um, petals and all of that I'd imagine so I'll leave it at that I think that gives me a good idea of what I could do. Um, as I was saying before, I was expecting it to have a much finer line and possibly when it dries out and you can barely know, it's still quite hard to get anything finer than that. Yep. Okay, well, um, I think a quill brush will definitely um, be needed because that's a lovely brush this one but it's not going to achieve what I thought it might do so yeah let me now go ahead and test out this color so you can see how it looks what it okay so I just checked I pulled out the Schwinger Horridum the new colors for 2017 and yes Quinacridone gold hue is one of the new colors it's right here the second color and it's gorgeous. I wanted to have something that is kind of um, similar to Indian yellow. I don't have Indian yellow in my Schmincke collection, the Horadam watercolors, but I do have transparent yellow which came in this 36 plus 12 um, watercolor palette and you can see that this color is already very much very similar to Indian yellow. If I pull out my um, white knights you can see that they're very very similar and if I hold it next to the Schminke you can see it's actually in between these two colors and so this one is being Indian yellow and this is Indian gold. Indian gold I believe is also if I'm not mistaken it's from the new colors but the Indian yellow for sure for for the um, white knights not to confuse you so the Schmincke Kunacridon gold hue is basically in between these two colors it has a little bit more kind of of a reddish tone to it and so I'm excited to try it because the yellows that I have are these and I find these three yellows they came in the palette. I didn't order anything else yellow apart from the transparent green gold, which is obviously a green, kind of like a yellow green sort of um, green, more of a green than yellow. And these two yellows are um, on an opaque side, although this one is a semi-transparent and this is a semi-opaque, but I do find when I paint with them, especially when I'm using this technique, which is going over ink, I find that the lines won't be as clear as if when I'm using the transparent yellow. So I'm hoping to have the same effect with this one, this watercolor which I just ordered. And I am, um, I don't remember actually, but it, yeah, it's just going to give me a little variety of yellows um, kind of thing, have just one extra yellow. Um, let's have a look together because I don't remember. So it says, oh yes, it's a transparent watercolor. It's got four stars for, you can see, four stars for light fastness. And it is semi-staining. 
so that's all the info it gives us so I'm happy to um, see that it's transparent okay so I'm going to unwrap it I find these super cute I never ordered a full pan from Schmincke I only have half pans and I think they're just so cute that I would rather have two half pans than one full pan so here is the little beauty. Now I'm going to swatch it probably around here just because I have some space. And I'm just going to drop some water to activate it. As you can see it activates real quick. And then I'm going to swatch it. Yeah, it's a beautiful colour, very organic. So if you are into floral painting I think you would enjoy this one. Very pretty. You can see the big variety of tones you get that. Very, very juicy and kind of bright in this corner to a very light um, colour over here. And then the middle point is also gorgeous. I am going to swatch the transparent yellow right next to it. And just so you know. So here is the Schmincke transparent yellow. So this one is more on the reddish side of the set. Sorry, my um, swatches are a little bit different today. For some reason, I'm, I'm going lengthwise. And just as a comparison with the... Why not, since I'm at it, let me do it with the White Knights. I'm going to... Um, which shall I do? So I'm going to do side by side, I'm going to do the Indian gold. This is this colour right here. Let me just make sure. Yes, yeah, it's the fourth one. So I'm going to... So it's a bit more... It's darker, isn't it? And then also keep in mind that Schmincke's watercolours, when they dry, they always dry to a lighter point compared to other watercolours. So it's quite similar, but a little darker. And then I'm going to do the Indian yellow, which is the one before. And it's right here. So in fact, they are really quite similar. Okay, so I'm going to take this teeny little pan of quinacridon gold hue. By the way, these WNs are not to be confused with Winston Newton. If you just tuned in, these are for white knights. Okay, so let's crack on. So I'm going to start with this flower one right here. And um, just to get the feel of it, I think the best thing to do is when you get a new watercolor, just start painting with it straight away. What could be better, or what could be a better way of testing a colour, right? And if it's too much, so I'm trying to see the different kind of varieties of this colour I can get. Obviously watering them out as much as I can, and then um, getting the darkest one over here, like so, I think. It looks quite nice, really pretty yellow. Definitely would recommend it if you are on a hunt for another yellow. Yellows are a bit complicated or they're hard to get. They're hard to get in terms of, um, they're hard to get the right one is what I'm trying to say. So I think I'm going to probably leave it at that. Actually, I want to see how it would mix with a green. Okay, so here's a little um, lesson of how to rescue things. So basically, if you end up in a situation like I did, someone comes into your room, disturbs you, and oops, you made a mistake, or it's a noise from outside, whatever it could be, there is a way to rescue things. So do you make sure you try your um, sketch or your illustration completely so I've used my um, heat gun and then 
go back to it. So I'm going to go in again with this quinacridon gold hue and just kind of applying it over the top and creating a little bit more interest. So when it's washed out, the areas that are washed out, because obviously I had to dab it off as it, it was becoming a bit of a mess, then the colour is not as interesting anymore. So I'm just repeating the steps, what I've done before, but kind of this time it's obviously layering the watercolour on what's already there. So you can always try and rescue a mistake you've made and obviously never go in too early with another colour because unless you want that effect but like here you saw how quickly it became a mess because the colour just flew into the other colour. So now it looks a lot better and I'm going to go back into the green. So I've got some sub green and this time very carefully to not touch the edges I'm going to basically do second layer of the green and leave it at that. So nice and um, bright it looks. I just thought for those of you who don't have um, Schmincke Sap Green, um, let me just show you what I meant by um, when I said the Schmincke Sap Green is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to go in, um, let me see in this corner actually, let me just zoom out slightly. Okay, so I'm going to do a normal swatch. Normal for me is, uh, is actually this way. So here is the sub queen. It's quite bright as you can see. And for my liking, it's too unnatural. So I definitely need to work at this color to get it where I need to get it. And now I'm going to mix sub green the one I just demonstrated to you with this Gunacridon Gold Hue. And first I'm going to add very little, like so, and I get a very kind of natural green, which is beautiful. I love this type of green, like so. And then if I add a bit too, too much, or not too much, but if I add more, of it, I want you to see what kind of colour I can get. Um, no, that's almost back to normal. Just going to go in again, mix it up. I think. Okay, now we're there. So then you get this kind of like a mustardy colour, very beautiful as well. So I'm quite happy that I got this quinacridone gold hue because it's fantastic for mixing in and neutralizing your greens as well as just on its own, it's very pretty. So there you go. Once again, thanks for watching and see you soon.